Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video discussing the Kansas State Wildcats and Keontae Johnson. Now, I know this is a massive story, and there's a ton of things to talk about with this, but before we do, let me say thank you so much for all the recent support on the channel. We've already passed milestones that I anticipated would take months down the road to get to, so I wanted to say thank you for all your support and continued comments and engagement with the content I've made. It helps me out a lot, and it just brings a smile to my face, so thank you again so much. If you're interested in seeing that, go ahead and consider subscribing or whatever you want to do. You don't have to. I'm not going to twist your arm about it, but if you're interested to subscribe, it helps me out a ton. Now, let's get into some basketball here. Now, Keontae Johnson. That name is not a shocker to anybody. That name should be a household name in everybody in the country right now. He had one of the best stories in all of college basketball, and I know that it's been really, really publicized at this point, but just a quick refresher, Keontae Johnson played for Florida, had a scary heart situation, was diagnosed with something called athlete's heart, ended up collapsing on a court, and wouldn't be, be able to play basketball at Florida for the rest of his career. Keontae gets healthy and then gets cleared by two different medical doctors who basically deemed him worthy to play. He transfers to K-State, and the rest is history. First team All-Big 12 guy, unbelievable story, and one of the best players to watch in Kansas State basketball history. That's not a stretch of the imagination. That is genuine. When you look at every single statistical category of single-year players, obviously he wouldn't be able to rack up multi-year accolades, but for one year alone, Keontae's up there in just about every single statistical category. And now with K-State, the slogan, we've got dudes, like that's a big thing for us, and we do have dudes, but we haven't really had dudes that much in the past. Guys that stand out on the court and say, that's an NBA player, that's an NBA player playing for a college team. He's a grown man a bunch of college, playing against college kids. That's what Keontae Johnson and Marquise Noel were this past season. Keontae has a very, very interesting choice up ahead of him. And I know that you're saying, Joe, don't make a video on this. Joe, this might be overblown. Don't, don't jump the gun. Just, just chill and see what happens. I'm sorry. I'm going to ignore you on this one. I have seen so many conversations talking about the likelihood of getting Keontae Johnson back for another season. Now, the first question you're probably thinking is, well, doesn't he have no eligibility? Isn't he done? Like, how could he play for us? Literally, how could the guy play for us? There's something where Keontae Johnson could be granted a medical year. Now, he could get another year of eligibility. He has to apply for it and talk, to, talk it over with college basketball and whatever the governing body in this case is, probably the NCAA, saying, you know what, I only played five minutes in my senior season for senior night with Florida. It wasn't really a season of basketball. Could I get another year to stay in college? And of course, they'd grant it to him. Like, you know, they're not going to deprive the kid and say, nah, you know, that's not, we don't want you around another year. You go to the NBA. They're not going to say that. They're not. If Keontae applies for another year to return to K-State, he's here, for sure. And I know that you're saying, you know what, it's not going to happen. Joe, don't get my hopes up. My hopes are in the ceiling right now. I am more energetic than ever. And I know you're probably thinking, Joe, what are you basing all this off of? What is this coming from? I've seen more Twitter conversations, more people chiming in on this saying, is Keontae coming back? I haven't seen an NBA draft announcement yet. Oh, well, you don't have to announce drafts. You don't, because people always make the narrative of, well, I don't have any eligibility. Why would I announce it? Marquise Noel did, Eric Stevenson did, Jalen Wilson did. There's a ton of players that do that every single year because that's the way it goes. Mike Miles, I don't know if he had any eligibility left, so that one might not be roped in that conversation. But the fact that we haven't seen an NBA draft announcement from Keontae yet kind of, you know, tweaks my brain a little bit. And it makes me think, you know what, maybe there's some wheels turning to get Keontae to be a Wildcat for another season. And currently, I know you're saying, well, look at the money. I mean, they're going to offer him $7 million as a rookie. And that's true. That's probably true. It'll probably be in that 7 to $10 million range. You can look it up, whatever you want. Might even be sub five at this point. Keontae is making $375,000 per year from his NIL valuation. And I know that's not $5 million. That's still a chunk of money. And it's not even a money decision really at this point. I don't think Keontae has done everything he wants to do in college basketball. I think he's going to cross that checkbook off before he goes to the NBA because he knows he'll never be able to return to this. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, and that's kind of been the message of Keontae's entire life is, hey, I've got a second chance at life. I'm going to live it to the fullest. I don't think we should be eliminating the possibility of Keontae coming back to K-State so fast. I think the ball is still in motion, and I know that Jerome Tang is not going to come out and say, hey, we're looking into uh, getting Keontae another year. It's going to be in Keontae's court. The ball's going to be in Keontae's court. The coaching staff, while many will do the, hey, we want you back as soon as possible. You come back for another year, wait wait for the NBA. Tang's not really that guy. Tang is wanting you to have the best opportunity for your future. And with Keontae, it could be to stay another year, but it also could be to go to the NBA. If Keontae Johnson decides to stay at K-State and gets that extra year, it's going to happen. It's all on Keontae. And I think there's multiple instances where I'm like, you know what? This is a reason that's a little bit like there's some underlining here. Think about after they lose in the Elite Eight. And I know it's a heartbreaking day for everybody. Everybody should react and be in tears and being hurt. Keontae Johnson took that way harder than the rest of the team. And I know that that last game is not how he wants to end his college basketball career. 
You know, you foul out with 19 minutes played and you're a superstar player. Like, that breaks your heart down to the core. You're one of the guys that got us here. We have to deliver this. Keontae wasn't able to do that. I mean, he still played great and was a massive help, but fouling out really, you know, diminished our chances of winning that game. And it's nothing with Keontae. I'm not going to sit here and call out Keontae or anything like that, but part of my brain is wondering if there aren't ducks in a row to get him back to K-State. Think about all the big things happening in Manhattan. This is the coaching staff of his life. He loves these dudes to death. This was his second chance, and he delivered. If you can do that another year and get a Big 12 Player of the Year, maybe even First Team All-America, maybe even deliver a national championship, wouldn't you want that opportunity? And I don't know. I'm not there on Keontae's mind. You guys might comment and say, you know what, Joe? You're out of, you know, you're out of touch. You don't know what's going on. I don't. Full disclosure, I don't. This is just my opinions as a fan and as a guy who says, you know what? What would happen? What's going to happen? And I'm not doing this for clicks or likes or anything like that, but it is a little bit interesting to see what's happened with Keontae. You know, Marquise announced pretty soon after, maybe a week after we lost to FAU, hey, K-State Nation, this has been incredible. Thanks for giving me a second chance in basketball. I'm going to move on and go to the NBA draft. He didn't have any eligibility. We all expected that. Keontae could have eligibility. He doesn't right now, but he could. And I think another thing, Jerome Tang and staff basically announced earlier a couple months ago that they were applying for a redshirt season for Dorian Finister, who did see action in six games. And I know that you have to play zero games to get a redshirt year, but there's special instances where the NCAA will grant that. If they're considering something like that, that's already out of the box, you know, it's not something you think of every year. Like, let's get this guy a redshirt. He played six games. He didn't play that much. Let's get him. Usually you just expect, well, that was his freshman season. You know what I mean? Let's move on. Next year we'll focus again. K-State might be considering some workarounds here to get Keontae Johnson back. And I know that things are still up in the air, and I want to say that I don't know what's going to happen, but there is a very real possibility that we see number 11 suit up wearing the lavender once again. I think he loves Manhattan more than anything in the world, and he's going to be an NBA draft pick. He's going to be an NBA player, whether it's this year or next year. And if he does decide to do that, then I'm wrong, and I apologize, Keontae. I hope you have nothing but success regardless of where you're at. I just think it's interesting that there's a possibility And if I don't entertain that possibility and I miss the opportunity to talk about it, I will kick myself on the back of the head 8,000 times. So Keontae Johnson, I don't know what your future looks like. I know it's going to be successful. I just don't know where next year lies. Whether it's in the NBA, whether it's in Manhattan, we're going to love you no matter what. You've, You've become a wildcat for life. And I want to see where this next step goes. You know, I'm sure that there's still months ahead. There's still time. June 23rd is when the NBA draft is supposed to happen. So it's, you know, late April right now. He's still got an entire month, two months basically to decide but let's see where things go. Let's see if we can obtain that that extra year. Let's see what happens then. Because I think there's still balls in motion for Keontae back in purple. I do. And I want to say one last thing before we end up getting out of here. I, I urge all the people watching this video and all the fans, we lost a really important K-State icon today in Ernie Barrett, the guy who basically owns the tightest handshake of all time. He was instrumental in the success of K-State Athletics and Kansas State University. He passed away this morning at 93 years old. If you have a moment, go ahead and pay your respects and just look back through some of the history with Ernie Barrett. If you haven't, I'm sure everybody watching this video knows Ernie a little bit closer than I do or knows a little bit more about Ernie, but he was a massive part of the K-State fan base, K-State Nation, K-State Athletics, basically anything you can picture that had the color purple on it, Ernie was a part of. We lost him today, so I want to say a big rest in peace to our friend Ernie Barrett, but that's going to do it for today's video. I appreciate you guys watching. If you're interested, go ahead and leave some comments with some suggestions for different videos. I think I've got another one in the works here that I want to talk about, some more potential portal fits and things going forward. But once again, all the support's been unbelievable, and I'm so grateful to have you guys along for the journey. If you like the videos, go ahead and consider subscribing. It helps me out a lot, and I'll blow you a kiss every single subscriber I get. I appreciate you guys. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and go Cats!